I, I share in the chat uh, for all of you um, a link. Uh, welcome to this session, uh, ILD and, and Ed Crumble session. You, you will find in, through this link uh, basic like kind of worksheet with an introduction to the tools, uh, links to key resources, our contact and key references. Uh, and in the resources, you find a link to the, um, to the, to the tools themselves and also links to videos, um, uh, some introductory videos and tutorials and, and, um, and so. Um, so, yeah, I hope this is sure but useful so that you can follow. Maybe I can already start. Um, Laya, no? um, shall I start? So I, I will be in charge of introducing ILD and then Laya will continue with more details for the case of the crumble. Um, in ILD is really, um, as I said before, a customizable um, infrastructure. So there are many tools within it. Uh, even if you see the main, um, and, and, and also uh, it will be a very practical uh, uh, session. So essentially we'll be showing, then we show in the tools. Huh? So in the case of ILE, you see that here uh, in, the, in the main page, we say it's an all-in-one learning design platform. Um, I, I have to share the, my screen, sorry. Mm. I was talking without sharing my screen. Now I hope you can, you can yeah. see. Yes. Okay, so the, we say that it's an all-in-one learning design community platform. So it's really a community platform kind of social uh, network, social infrastructure for designers, for teachers, or for practitioners. Um, and there we have integrated, if you go, um, you can register using uh, your Google accounts, for example, if you want. And then if you go inside, have it open in another window uh, so that I can show everything somehow quickly. If you go inside, you will see that there are in this demo installation of ILE, you will see that there are already a number of, of designs created. You can go to the community and see the, the, the members in this demo installation where we are integrating the new developments that we are uh, achieving within our uh, team at UPF in Barcelona, Universitat Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona. So it's really, let's say, the complete, the comprehensive uh, integrated learning design version that we have when you can uh, play, you can see all the different features. Um, so for example, in, in a show, the community where you can see um, all participants. You can also see some statistics in the uh, in, in ILD, uh, where you can see then the numbers of designs that have been created from the scratch, designs that have been reused by 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 teachers by duplicating uh, the already existing designs and eventually uh, refining, modifying them. The how the designs has been explored. You, you can also see by tool and some information about the, the members in the community. So we are providing that kind of overarching community uh, information. No? So you can scan the community and check the, the designs being created by every member in the community and that have been publicly shared. And then you have the basic uh, statistics. Then you also can see the, the designs, the list of available designs and create your own designs. For that, we provide a number of tools that we say they are for conceptualizing. And that includes the problem generation tool by the Australian colleagues, uh, Shirley um, and Lori, as she presented in the in the previous, uh, in her in her speech, um, here is the generating the problem. It's a problem generating tool, but we also have other tools that are specifically focused on analyzing, conceptualizing the characteristics of the learning uh, context, so that uh, the designers, the teachers, are ready for, to actually create the learning activity plans. This is what we call authoring, author, and there you can see that we have a number of tools integrated, some that are specific, for example, for collaborative learning as Collage or Pyramid App, 
or the specific tool that will be presented in more detail by Laya that is crumbled at crumble in a particular ILB installation that is only devoted to the crumble installation and that is provided additional features. Um, and then you can implement some of the designs into virtual learning environments and specifically, for example, to, to model um, for some of the tools that have been integrated because we have plugins um, developed with colleagues uh, at the University of Valladolid in Spain. So this is the overall uh, idea of this uh, comprehensive uh, integrated infrastructure for learning design. But as you've seen, it can be very complex because there are a number of tools. Um, so we've, what we've been doing uh, for a particular project is to customize this version so that only a selection of particular tools are, are available hmm? and also adapting the and look and feel and so on and so forth, improving the usability all the time. So this is, for example, an installation that we have for a um, uh, particular uh, teacher training program where the students, uh, future teachers, they are creating um, didactic units and sharing the units with their uh, peers so that they are doing pre-assessment, et cetera. And this is another installation of makers in the classroom. So this is a collaboration with Barcelona City Town, where uh, multiple schools in Barcelona are co-creating uh, with our support as well, uh, learning projects uh, to support or for the development of digital skills in particular maker um, in the context of maker methodologies. So these are two examples of particular installations of ILE. Um, and now Laya will go more into details of the particular installation for the Ed Crumble tool that is particular learning design perspective that we have been developing recently in, in our team uh, led by Laya and uh, in, is provided in the context of the community environment of ILE, previously uh, called LDJ for that community features and that is providing some extra features by being in this devoted installation. So now the floor is yours, uh, Laia, but please feel free, all of you, um, in, if you were interested in ILD um, as a community environment that is integrating different tools and that can be customized for different purposes, particular educational centers or across centers initiatives, please um, feel free to either post me questions in the chat, I will be answering um, while Laya is also presenting at Crumble and you feel, of course, can feel free to contact us later after the workshop if you are interested in knowing more or interested in trying or interested in any collaboration, we'll be glad. Uh, okay, now I, I stop sharing my screen and it's time for Laya. Thank you, Davinia. Uh, I will share my screen also. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay. So, well, I will provide you a short demo of how a Crumble works and what is a Crumble. Uh, please, if you want to interrupt me, you can do that by posting questions into the chat and if Davinia can just uh, tell me if someone is posting questions, I will try to answer them. And feel free to, to do these questions where, uh, while I'm presenting. So um, I just gave you a link to join at Crumble. If you want to test at Crumble, just join this link and you can sign up uh, and it's open uh, to use. So in the main page of the Crumble, you will see that uh, we provide also check tutorials here button that uh, you are able here to learn how a crumble works with uh, video tutorials a step by step so you can join and going from one until seven uh, going and learning how a crumble works and all the features that uh, at the moment we have so i let you this as a resource here just uh, for you to know so i will log in you can log in with uh, Google or just with email and an account. And uh, here is like the, the environment that Davinia already presented, the LDJ Guild environment where you uh, can create designs, you can explore uh, and list your designs, and also you can explore others' designs from the community. 
Mainly in this presentation, I will show you the editor of Ecrumble. So we uh, will go to the create page where you can see how a learning design or how a lesson plan looks in, into Ecrumble. So first of all, here there is a, a short guidelines uh, to show you how to start with Ecrumble editor. Uh, we made, uh, introduced the name of the course. You can design a course, but you can also design a workshop, uh, activity of two hours, a uh, full course of three uh, months, whatever you want. So here you will place the name of the course. We can put some information here about the course. And also we can select, for instance, the topic and the educational level. Imagine that we are designing for a primary education course. So at Crumble saves automatically all the information that you uh, in, introduce in the boxes. So when we pop up again, the information button, the information that we have introduced is here already. Also, we can state the learning objectives of our design. Just posting the list of objectives here. Also, we can describe the evaluation just on text. We can specify the number of users that we will have, the students we will have in our design. Imagine that it's a 40, oh, well, maybe it's too much, 20 students in our class. And the most important thing that are the dates of our course, activity, workshop, whatever. So we should specify the dates. Imagine that we are designing from 5th of July until 30th of July, and suddenly appears a timeline. The timeline is the main element of a crumble editor, and it has a peculiarity, which is, is it has two um, layers. So you see that two icons here. The first one, this one is the institutional icon, means that in this layer, we will place the activities that will occur in class, in face-to-face, -face, in present. And in the other layer, we will place the activities that happens outside of class. So how to create the first activities? We have here the guidelines that indicate us that we can use these both uh, buttons. The first one is to introduce an activity. Imagine that this is the class one. And that starts on 7 at 30. 30th and 7, I don't know, at 4, for instance, at 2, for instance. So we have here the first class. We can navigate through the, the, the timeline, zooming out and zooming in. And you can see here that we are in the 7th of July and class number one. Uh, we have the three different languages. So you can turn uh, to Catalan, Spanish, or English. So now the calendar is in English. Um, and then you can see here that the class is already, and it's the blue, dark blue color. So now we will create another activity, but this case, it will be a homework activity that will happen out of class. So imagine we create the out of class activity and automatically, you see that we have these two activities in two different uh, layers. So if we click on the activity, we see that each activity, when we click on, the, on it, we can configure this activity. We can change the time. We can, for instance, decide which learning objectives will be practiced in this class. For instance, in this class, I will tackle objective one and objective two. And here we have the minutes of the whole session. So we have 60, in this case, I put one minute more, so one hour and one minute length class. And now we should decide which task we will do in this class, right? So first of all, we click here in the plus button and we can start creating our task. Uh, as Diana Laurier mentioned in her presentation, this is a student oriented in the sense that here we will put what we ask, what we will ask, students to do in class. So for instance, here we will do like we will offer them a presentation or lecture. And we can here describe what is the lecture about. 
Here, note that the lecture automatically the task is, that is created is 20 minutes, but we can increase or decrease this. And automatically, it calculates the time remaining for this class. So we still have 40 minutes to allocate. Then we need to decide which type. The lecture presentation will be like, uh, for instance, uh, understanding or neutral. So according to the Bloom's taxonomy, we can categorize this task. Imagine that it's a neutral because it's a very neutral presentation that it doesn't uh, ask students to, to remember or to, for instance, to apply or to analyze anything. Then we should select if this presentation is individual group or whole class, because uh, this is the teacher explaining the lecture to the whole class, we'll select the whole class. Teacher will be present. So teacher is available face-to-face, -face. we click this button, and it will not be graded. It's an activity that will happen in class without any affection to the, to the grading of the students. So it will not be graded. We will do that for another activity. So the rest of the time, 40 minutes time, we will do a group activity. Um, or imagine applying or uh, the concepts that we present in the lecture. So we will do an applying activity uh, in groups of, for instance, four people for students and teacher also will be available because it will be an in-class activity. And this would be, for instance, graded. So we can like characterize the task using these photons, the time, the room taxonomy levels, the collaboration, the level of collaboration between the students, the teacher's presence and the grading uh, mode. So once we have done this for this activity, you see that we can navigate through these buttons to the homework and we can ask, uh, for instance, students remembering activity uh, watching a video at home. So this will be an, an individual activity that will not, teacher will be not present. And for instance, it will be for auto evaluation and it will take 60 minutes. So we have an example of two uh, sessions. We could design here all the sessions for the whole month course using the timeline. Now uh, I will explain you how to put the resources. You see that each activity can have different resources. The resources panel in Scramble is on the left side, so we can navigate through this. We can click on this click button and navigate through the whole the, all the resources available. The resources are categorized between different uh, labels like files, applications, like a puzzle or educational technology applications, physical artifacts, like if we are using electronics or like books, physical books, uh, communication applications like email, forum, WhatsApp, or social ones, like the most uh, known uh, social networks. And also we are working on incorporating also and adding MOOCs uh, as a resource for using in the in the classes so imagine that for the lecture we will do a we will do so we are planning to use a powerpoint so we will drag and drop the powerpoint into the presentation lecture you see here that when i drag and drop the resource into the in the task uh, uh, place it appears the pop-up when i can describe for instance ppt for the lecture one i can put the description and what is important is to decide how I will show and how I will make available this resource for our students. So I can, for instance, put the resource in a web. It will be a art physical artifact. I will put it in a Google uh, Drive, or I will store it in, a, for instance, in a Moodle site, in an LMS. So in this case, I decide to put my resource in an LMS that uh, we have in our institution. Imagine that we have a Moodle installation if our, in our institution. And the target for, of this resource will be a student resource for them to access, but also is a teacher resource. But okay, we can indicate as a student resource. And if it, this would be a file, like it was not be like, uh, I can have the option of putting a URL to this resource or uploading a file. So I will close this. I have this resource here, 
And now you will see that in the timeline, it has appeared a resource layer, hosting layer, uh, LMS, this is Moodle. So it means that in this class, I will need this PowerPoint that will be hosted in the Moodle of the course. I can do that, for instance, for another resource, for instance, uh, I don't know, like a video. So in the homework, we said that they will work uh, watching a video. So imagine that I will put this video, I don't know if you are uh, familiar with that puzzle uh, application, it allows you to create videos and post questions between the videos. So imagine that we use this resource. So I will put the, my video in uh, to Ed Crumble, uh, Ed Puzzle, sorry. So I can go to Ed Puzzle, take the link to the video and insert it as a URL for this resource and it would be for students. And the medium hosting time will be the web because it's a web application. So I close this and you see that it appears an over layer in the resources, means that in my course for, it, it allows you to, to visualize the complexity of the infrastructure that I will need for my blended course. For instance, I will need this model with a PowerPoint, but also I will need to access this web page of uh, Edpuzzle to ask to, for my students to access their crumble video. So this is, one thing that the Crumble provides uh, you to the teacher to visualize the, the whole design of the blended course um, separated between in-class and outside of class activities and also the resources and uh, where we host these resources. But I still didn't mention anything about data analytics, which I was mentioning this in, in my pitch. Whereas we are designing at Crumble, we have available some of analytics, design analytics means analytics about our design that help us to make design decisions. For instance, now, because we only have two sessions, it's very easy to calculate how much time we spend or will uh, our students spend in the class or outside of class in homework, for instance. But when we have a a big course with different settings, this it's more harder to calculate. So for instance, here you see that I activate this panel on the right side, we can see different analytics regarding our design. For instance, the first one is regarding the time that in class and outside of class uh, of our design. So you will see here that it calculates and it, it's the same, it follows the same color uh, rules that in the timeline, for instance, in class is dark color and outside of class is uh, more light blue. So here we have more or less 50-50 uh, divided the time in 50-50 out and inside class. Then we can go for more interesting analytics, which are, for instance, uh, sorry, I can remove. So for instance, the tasks you remember that we had the opportunities to select the Bloom's taxonomy levels that our students will uh, apply another cognitive level that our students uh, will practice in uh, our task. So here it, this task visualization, it provides you an idea of which type of activities will uh, the students use. For instance, 50% of our design is remembering activities while 40% of our design is applying activities. And we can also visualize this depending on inside, outside of class. For instance, we can see that out of class, we ask students only remembering activities, whereas in class, we just use the applying activities. And this is neutral activities that is just a lecture, listening, listening a lecture. So the same applies for the other one. So see that this corresponds to the first uh, category that we can categorize the tasks here. So the other tasks are corresponding to the other three categories that we can use for characterizing our tasks. For instance, the student and the colors are more are the same. So more darker, more collaboration. And teacher as more darker, more teacher presence. So, and both 
and all of these uh, categories can be visualized in the whole, like for instance, how much time uh, my students will work in my design in, at the individual level, so it's 50%, or at the group level, 33%, or at the, in the whole class, 20%. And we can also visualize this depending on in-class and outside of class. And we can do also this for teachers present, so in this case, Half of the course is face-to-face uh, -face with the teacher and half, half of the workload of the students are, is happening outside of class. And also regarding the assessment, if, uh, it will be activities for auto-evaluation or activities that are not graded or graded and so on. We are working here on visualization regarding goals. You remember that we have uh, here indicated the objectives that each task are uh, practicing. So we are working on a visualization uh, regarding this uh, le uh, student teacher present task um, depending on the goals of uh, the course. So these are type of analytics. I want to show you uh, a video of, we have explored um, more kind of complex analytics in a case study that we do with it uh, with the uh, University of Pittsburgh in in US that we in particular really explore the concept level analytics. I would like you show, to show you a video. I don't know if you can see now my video in my screen. If you can say is Davinia or someone can confirm it, confirm that uh, the video, you can see the video? Yes, yes. It's yes. Okay. okay, thank you. So here I will show you a particular instance that uh, we set up uh, with a scramble. Here you can see that there are a uh, resources for a Java course in a university. Um, this was the University of Pittsburgh. They have different type of resources for learning how to program Java. So these are a type of interactive resources that they have. And each of these type of resources are uh, practicing different concepts concepts of programming. And each resource is uh, like articulated or is linked to different kind of concepts uh, of each resource. So for instance, uh, like a, a program, um, like a one resource, it, it practices different um, concepts. So here in the graph, you can see all the concepts of the course that the students will practice. And each time we drag and drop one resource here, it shows you how this resource will contribute at the concept level. So these are the frequencies, the number of times that a resource is practicing, for instance, this concept. Or like, for instance, I don't know if some of you are familiarized with uh, programming uh, courses, but for instance, these are like concepts regarding Java courses. So it, this visualization, it's very interesting because it, it allows you to to balance the type of uh, activities needed for practicing the concepts that we want to teach to the students. So this is to show you that we are uh, working on different kinds of visualizations and more advanced analytics than those uh, that you can find now in the open version of Scrabble. And we are trying to do so in, in different uh, uh, contexts. This, in this study that we did, we just, uh, uh, the main result was that this type of analytics help uh, teachers, support teachers in reducing their mental demand, their cognitive load, while they were designing the course. So it was a kind of interesting result that we get, so that design analytics could really help in order to design courses and be more precise in order to to, to use or to select most, the most appropriate resources for practicing the concepts and the learning objectives that we want to, to teach in our courses. Okay, once finished this example of uh, concept level uh, design analytics, I will continue with the crumble with the version that you, you, you can see in the web. Here in the, we have now explored uh, analytics at the course level, but what about analytics of at, at individual activity level? So you see here in the, in the timeline, we see a button that is a statistics. 
you can click this button and we can see here a visualization with a lot of wonderful colors that uh, like the first time it can be a little overwhelming, but it's very easy to understand. So here you have a bottoms uh, on, the, on the bottom page after the timeline to activate and de deactivate this analytics. So for instance, we don't want to see any of them. Or for instance, if we want to explore the student uh, collaboration. So here we see that in the dark color, because I have in my memory what the dark color means, the data color means, and I know the icons, I should put some remembering here. But uh, this, for instance, is the, for the whole group class. Here is the group, uh, working in groups, and the more likely green is for individual uh, work. So this visualization, for instance, I can combine this visualization with uh, grading visualization, and I can see that the whole class activity is not graded while the group activity is graded and the homework activity is for auto-evaluation. So this visualization in the timeline and the colors following the, the colors that are used in the task and in the whole crumble allows you to, to reflect at the course level and at the task level and visualize what we are doing while we are designing. Also, this last one indicates you this type of resources if they are teaching resources or student resources. This is more or less the idea of the analytics. These are the types of analytics we think that at Gramble and ILDE provides different opportunities to, to support teachers using analytics. And we distinguish, it, distinguish between three types of analytics. This example is a design analytics uh, support that uh, the editor of the Crumble provides and other editors that Laura, uh, Diana and other teams have presented in their pitches also provide. What is interesting in our approach is that uh, the, the use of community analytics. This analytics alone can provide insights to teachers while they are designing. But imagine that you are, we are, for instance, I don't know how many people is listening this this talk, but imagine that we are 10 people that uh, are 10 teachers of the same cohort of students. Imagine that these students, all of us, we are very innovative and suddenly we use all of us uh, video and flip classroom uh, approach. So we ask students to watch videos at home and um, like do uh, activities in class, more active activities in class. Mainly, uh, probably if we all of us do that, students will have 10 videos in one week at home and maybe it will lose the effect of using these innovative or flip uh, of approaches, not this flip classroom approaches. So what we can do in a crumble is to use these analytics and put these analytics aggregated in an aggregated way in a way that we can generate community analytics. I will show you this idea once I finish with the Ed crumble editor at the end. So I will show you how these analytics can be put together in, and generate aggregated analytics of different designs that are applying or are thinking to be applied in our same cohort of students to make decisions at the institutional level, at, at the teacher's group level, not at only at the subject level or course level. So here on the top part of a crumble, you can see that you can save a crumble, you can uh, access the help video tutorial, but also you can print this design like uh, if were uh, like a syllabus for your students or for you uh, in order to have the, the printed syllabus of your design with your general information that you have introduced in the design, the evaluation, the different activities, the resources, and the analytics also to have it then printed and also like the visualization, the interactive visualization to play with the design and to make use of this visualization. What is also we, we have and we are working on is some providing different type of pedagogical guidelines to guide because we think that at Crumble in our tools, we, they should be like neutral, pedagogically neutral, but we are aiming with these guide, uh, guidelines to provide some help in order to implement innovative uh, uh, 
approaches like big classroom or program-based learning or even distributed practice or practices based on neuro, uh, neuroscience. So this is a very initial work, but you can see here that activating these buttons, short guidelines with different steps, sorry, because this is in Catalan, I, we should translate that, that it provides you the different steps that you should provide in order, in order to apply flipped classroom, for instance. And see that the first steps are deactivated in in-class activity because the first steps in, in flipped classroom are usually at, ho at home as a homework. So this is just to you to provide you our ideas on providing pedagogical uh, guidelines. And we are working now, especially on providing guidelines uh, through a distributed practice. So uh, teachers can apply distributed practice in Scramble and can see the how distributed practice and can guide teachers in order to apply and to design distributed practice in their teaching. Um, these, I think, are more or less the, the overall ideas of Scramble. There is here a button of, uh, for writing the experience that uh, you will have with this design, at, uh, the implementation of the design. So once you have designed with a crumble and you go to, the, to your classes, you implement the design. Here you can uh, write your reflections and your, your lessons learned, what worked well, what didn't, as an experience to share your design with others in the community. So once it's saved, we can go to the uh, crumble. Ah, sorry, I forgot. Here there is a button that is give feedback. Uh, please, if you test at crumble and saw and find some bugs or you want us to implement a particular feature, please put here your ideas. There is a web page with a, a chat that you can put and collaborate with us. Because at crumble has been built together uh, following with teachers and educators from the beginning following a co-creation approach. So we are very happy that uh, all practitioners, all teachers that are interested in, in uh, using our tools provide us uh, also feedback and we can build all these tools together. So if we now go to a scramble, we see that uh, here we have my designs, uh, my, uh, all the designs that we have created and we can explore also the community, who is in the community, and the analytics of the community, as Davinia mentioned before, who is contributing more, which type of designs, who explore for our models, etc. So how, uh, imagine that I will explore a design, I don't know, through your course. This is how it looks, a design uh, in, in the page, in the main page. So I can edit this design, but for instance, because it's my design, but instance, if I go to the community and explore other designs that are not mine, let's see. Here, instead of uh, edit the design, I can see inside. So I can go inside. I can look at the design that has been published for another teacher in the community. And if I like this design, I can remix. Remix means that I can save the design to my uh, personal account to build from the design of other teachers. So, and if I don't like the design or I just explore, just I come back to a crumble and uh, that's all. But I have the possibility of building my designs uh, from the designs of other teachers that have shared their designs in the community. So let me open, for instance, Yes, another course. As you can note here, here is a, well, a short design. Here it will appear how the experience was and the general descriptor with the different visualization. I can publish this design with a link and the visualization and share this design outside of the Scramble platform and embed this design, for instance, in my LMS or in my web page or sharing them, them with, uh, I don't know, through open, uh, um, network pages, but also what is interesting that I can just give my opinion or for instance put likes or favorites to other designs in the community and place comments etc. And also I can see the three, sorry because this is very short, but here we will see the three that has been, let me 
if I can find another design, probably that's in build. Let's try that. Maybe no. Okay. So this tree is the reusing tree. So if I can create a design and other another person in the community reuse my design, uh, in this tree it will show that my design was built upon another teacher's design, and so that you can track who started originally this design. Uh, regarding the um, community analytics, you see that here there is a folder uh, of possibilities. So I can put this, I can create folders in uh, the explore page and I can put this folder, for instance, in a school folder, uh, this is in the school folder. So imagine that we do that. If we explore like different communities of folders for different communities, for instance, at Cola means uh, th uh, these are different uh, schools in the Catalonia. So imagine that this school have two designs, then I can see the aggregated analytics of these two designs. This allows me, as I mentioned before, to take design decisions at the community level and see, for instance, these uh, students that are uh, in these two different that, uh, designs, these two courses, um, in, in global, how much time, how much work uh, workflow they have outside of class. So this, for instance, in primary education, it's uh, they, the primary teachers ask us to develop this feature to discuss the homework time uh, of the uh, students, no? Because usually students in primary or secondary, mainly also, they are complaining with, oh, we have a lot of homework, whatever. No? So this allows teachers to decide and to see which is the teacher are putting more homework or should reduce the homework. Or, and so on. Or for instance, regarding how much of collaborative work they are applying in all the courses that they are, uh, the students are, are in. And so this is the idea of community analytics, basically. So I think more or less I provide you an overview of it, Rumble. I don't know if I forgot something, but if not, you have tutorials, you can practice, we can, you can contact us and Please, if you have any question now, just uh, post the question to the chat or uh, open the mic. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you uh, providing the comments and for uh, to Laia for this very nice, uh, very nice uh, presentation of uh, different features. Huh? Um, I, I don't know. I think we have some time now. Uh, we have like uh, ten minutes uh, for if, if you want to make comments, uh, post questions. Um, I don't know. Uh, whatever. Uh, now the, the floor is for you to. Uh, share, comment, or uh, ask. I think that I've been somehow answering to several of the questions. Uh, there is one pending that is about the um, edit uh, history of the designs. We do provide that feature for the basic templates uh, of uh, in, in ILDE, but not really for the advanced authoring uh, tools uh, for the moment. Ed Crumble is a product or a university research. So it's, it's an university research uh, software. So it's, it's part of our research and our research projects. Um, Having said that, we really want that our software development is usable um, so that it can be used for practitioners and it can have some social impact. So we are not only doing like basic prototypes, however, at the, at the same time, even if we try to do mature products, um, we have also to be honest that our uh, tools are not uh, um, products no, by companies so that they are uh, like highly, you know, robust. 
uh, so I said they are um, research uh, tools, more than prototypes, functional, um, some tools more mature than others, but uh, we also provide maintenance. So in our team, we have a scientific software developer that is his, his job is supporting the development and also uh, being, uh, you know, maintaining um, and reacting to issues of people using them. And we are very open to collaborating, uh, to col yeah, for collaborations um, uh, with many different institutions that we are doing so far, different kinds of collaboration, research collaborations, practice collaborations, because for us it's very important that our research is really transferring to practice, um, to do also uh, to do joint work, joint research uh, with other institutions. So we are really, open to collaboration so our tools are available for use in the in the cloud so to say and we maintain them um, and even uh, that that um, we can even if there is an agreement of for collaboration um, we, we are even open to create devoted installations for uh, for several institutions as we are doing so so far so even devoted installations for one uh, center that is empty, I mean, and available for them. So this is, we offer that. Huh? So we are not a company, we do that for research, uh, but we want our tools to be used in practice. So we provide collaboration and support and especially interested in collaborating with different kinds of partners that enable us to keep uh, progressing our research by identifying relevant questions by uh, being able to do joint uh, research. So still some minutes uh, in case you want to say anything else. If not, please remember, uh, I, I will share again the, the link to the key info that we prepare for you with the main descriptions of, of the tools. Um, you are, of course, very welcome to, to take a look at the, our tools. Uh, it's a possibility to integrate other languages in Ed Crumble. Well, our tools, yes, uh, we, we prepare our tools so for the, to be multilingual. And if you see, there are several installations that are, for example, only in Catalan. Um, we provide it even in collaboration with, um, with uh, Yishai. We started even translation huh? uh, to Hebrew. And, and I mean, that's uh, prepared. And of course, we have an English show, yes. <laughs> Just a general question: If it will be translated to Hebrew, we can use it here in Israel. I mean, yeah, but the, the translation that was started uh, was no fee. I mean, we prepare, we send. I mean, everything is prepared, but the translation is not finished. So this is something that we start with which is high, but it's for the ILD environment. So in case we there is interest in, in particular in at Crumble, we'll have to work on that translation together. But it's something feasible. I mean, and the tools are prepared uh, for that. So it's something that certainly can be done, and it's one aspect of collaboration uh, that can be established uh, between different institutions. Like so providing support with the translation, and then we provide a multilingual version. Mm -hmm. And the English uh, version, it's it's available, right? It's, uh... Indeed, yes. Thank you. Yeah, so feel free, the tools uh, are, I mean, you have the links to the tools, to the videos, to our contacts, so please uh, feel free uh, to navigate them and let us uh, know if you have further questions or comments or if you are interested in collaborating to any extent with us. It has been our pleasure uh, that you participated in, in this workshop. Uh, looking forward to all and being in contact with all of you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, everybody. So, Ellie, I, I guess that we can now um, go to the other uh, Zoom, yeah. right? Yeah, go back to the, yeah, to the, okay. thanks. We have to go to the program again and go back. In. Okay. 
and I, I will discuss with uh, Shai and see how we can integrate it in Meital in a way that maybe it will be useful for all, all mm -hmm. institute of partners here in Israel. So, okay, good to go. Yes.